The movie opens with Elizabeth McGraw walking to work from home. She goes through various crossings and streets till she arrives at the art gallery she works at. Elizabeth sits on the doorstep waiting for the person to open the door. The man arrives and they both enter. Elizabeth and colleagues are discussing the dinner party she is hosting that night in preparation of the grand opening of the gallery. Elizabeth and Molly, Elizabeth's closest friend, go out shopping for the dinner party. At a Chinese grocery store, Elizabeth meets John Gray for the first time. John is a Wall Street arbitrager. Elizabeth and John locked eyes, but they did not speak to each other. By the time Elizabeth is done with shopping, John has gone out of the store. Outside the grocery store, Elizabeth and Molly are waiting for a taxi. While waiting, Elizabeth sees John in another store across the street, talking with a friend, and Elizabeth could not take her eyes off him till she gets into the taxi. Some days later, John meets Elizabeth at a street fair. Elizabeth is enjoying herself dancing to the tune of the music playing at the fair. Elizabeth walks around to the window shop. She prices a scarf but could not afford it. She later buys a wooden chicken that is programmed to lay eggs while walking. John walks up to Elizabeth at the chicken stand and smiles at her. Elizabeth, seeing him, could not control herself. She smiles back at John before walking away. John follows her and presents her a gift of scarf which she priced earlier but could not afford. She thanks him and he takes her to a restaurant for lunch. They talk at length during lunch after which Elizabeth follows John to his house in the area. John tries scaring her by giving the impression of wanting to take advantage of her. But Elizabeth decides to leave and go home. Days later, they start dating. John takes Elizabeth to various places of fun and Elizabeth enjoys every bit of it. With time, John's strange behavior escalates, but he seduces Elizabeth by giving her an expensive gold watch with instructions that she should think about him touching her at noon every day, and Elizabeth promises to do so. Elizabeth fulfills her promise to John every day. In fact, Elizabeth goes further and gives herself the five-finger excitement at work at the designated time. Elizabeth tells John that she wants to introduce him to her friends, but John gives her an excuse saying that he only wants to see her in the evenings and he tells her to see her friends during the day. One particular evening, Elizabeth is alone in John's apartment. Restless, she starts going through his things and finds a photo of him with another woman named April Tova. Later that night, John calls Elizabeth and asks if she went through his things and she admits it. John calls her a bad girl and threatens to punish her. When John returns home, he orders Elizabeth to raise her skirt and face the wall for a spanking. Surprised to hear this, Elizabeth tries to leave, but the door is locked. Elizabeth aims to slap him and tries to fight him, but he overpowers her and he takes advantage of her. Despite this, Elizabeth still falls in love with John, so she starts to enjoy his dominant way of life. Elizabeth is so much in love that when John takes her to a clock tower, she does not resist doing the nasty with him on top of the clock tower. John takes control of all aspects of Elizabeth's life. John is responsible for choosing what she wears and eats. John brushes her hair the way he likes it to look, and he also feeds her. Elizabeth becomes absolutely dependent on John, losing her sense of self-reasoning. One day, Elizabeth trails John to his place of work. John, surprised, asks her what she is doing in his office, and she replies that she was wondering how he spends his time when he is not with her. She then brings out the lunch she brought for him. John's reaction to Elizabeth's visit quickly tells her that she is not welcome, so she leaves John's office immediately. Later that night, John arranges for Elizabeth to cross dress for a rendezvous at a bar at the Algonquin Hotel. Elizabeth checks the package and sees a man's suit with bow tie and shoes alongside a moustache. Elizabeth dresses up and meets John at the designated venue and time. After dinner, they are both walking home, but they are mistaken for a gay couple and attacked by a group in an alley. Two people from the group chase them till they get into a sewer with no exit. Once they catch up with them and start fighting them. While fighting, a knife drops from one of the tramps and Elizabeth picks it up. Elizabeth stabs one of the attackers in the buttocks and they flee. Excited about the incident, Elizabeth declares her love for John. The two lovers start kissing and romancing. Elizabeth removes her clothes which reveals her wet and formal underwear and they have passionate whoopee with John at the scene of the crime. John starts to make their BDSM-style relationship more evident in public. John takes Elizabeth to a jewelry shop and dares her to shoplift a necklace. Without thinking, Elizabeth looks around, and when no one is watching, she takes the necklace, puts it in her pocket, and walks away. Another day at the bedding section in Bloomingdale's, 
John asks Elizabeth to lay down on a bed and spread her legs for Daddy right there in front of the saleswoman at an equestrian store where BDSM related materials are sold. John tries various whips and even uses one of the riding crop whip on Elizabeth's leg after which he tells the salesman, I'll take this one. Later that evening, back at John's apartment, Elizabeth performs a strip dance for John while John prepares dinner for them both. Elizabeth starts getting more confident and sex at home with John, but she becomes withdrawn at work despite the fact that the grand opening of the gallery is three weeks away. Sometimes, Elizabeth thinks about her ex-husband Bruce, who starts dating her co-worker, friend and roommate Molly. One day, after several attempts to get in touch with him fail, Elizabeth goes to the countryside to visit an elderly artist named Fonsworth and secure an exhibit for the opening. She meets Fonsworth under a tree shade examining a fish he caught in his hook. Elizabeth sits with him and starts a conversation about the opening, reminding him that it is weeks away and they are yet to receive his works for display. Fonsworth tells Elizabeth that he has not forgotten and the exhibits will be delivered when due. Some day after, John tells Elizabeth that he wants them to play a game. John explains that the purpose of the game is to give him excitement. John asks Elizabeth to crawl and pick up money as he throws it on the floor of his office. Elizabeth initially obliges but then objects telling John that it is a stupid game. John instructs her to continue crawling and pick the money but still Elizabeth refuses. Angry, John takes off his belt and starts whipping the floor and walls, almost hitting Elizabeth. Elizabeth cries and protests but John continues to insist that she crawl and pick up the money. She eventually does so before throwing the money in John's face and declaring that she hates the game. Seeing that she no longer seems comfortable, John quickly turns it into a joke and Elizabeth relaxes and plays along with John. Girl, if you haven't seen all the red flags by now, then I don't know what to tell you. Back at the office, Bruce comes to pick Molly up for their outing. Elizabeth sees him and quickly hides thinking he was there because of her. Elizabeth tells Molly to go tell Bruce that she is not in the office but Molly informs her that Bruce is there for her. Hearing this, she feels a little bit sad. She stands and watches Bruce from afar while he and Molly walk out of the gallery after sharing a kiss. Elizabeth gets an appointment to meet John at a room at the Chelsea Hotel. Elizabeth gets there and goes straight to the reserved room. The room is empty. After looking around, she sits on the bed waiting. Then the phone rings and she picks it up. John, on the other end, tells Elizabeth that he loves her and would like her to do something for him. He instructs her to open the drawer, take the blindfold, undress and wear the blindfold on herself. Elizabeth takes the blindfold but does not wear it but she takes off her clothes leaving only her underwear. John comes in and finds her not doing as instructed. He then asked her to use the blindfold and she did. John touches her briefly and waits for the female funtime worker he had invited earlier. The fun-time worker knocks and John opens the door. The worker enters the room and starts caressing Elizabeth while John observes. Elizabeth shows anxiety and after a few minutes, the woman removes Elizabeth's blindfold. John then takes the woman to the next room and starts undressing her. Elizabeth intervenes violently by hitting the worker and then flees with John in pursuit. John catches up with her and asks her how she feels about the event at the hotel room, but Elizabeth responds and tells him to watch how it feels. They both end up in an adult entertainment venue where Elizabeth starts kissing the man next to her during a live adult funtime show. John approaches her and they embrace. Opening day is here. Elizabeth's gallery hosts a successful opening featuring Fonsworth's work. Fonsworth, though uncomfortable with the partying crowd, notices Elizabeth crying in a corner. Elizabeth, dependent on John for emotional stability, calls him while wearing a metal bracelet cuff. The next morning, Elizabeth rises from beside John and tries to leave John's apartment. Elizabeth starts packing her clothes and stuff, preparing to leave, but John tries to convince her to stay by confessing his feelings and telling her about his family. Elizabeth's mind is made up and she leaves anyway. John begins a mental countdown, hoping that Elizabeth will return before he finishes counting. Elizabeth walks away into the street among the crowd, crying. Although it's really hard to leave a relationship, this is what must be done. Elizabeth should have known her worth a long time ago and should have seen John never really appreciated her because he treated her like a secret girlfriend. That is not real love. At the end, it's possible that there was real love there from both of them, but it was a little too late for Elizabeth. This was too toxic, especially since she's coming from a divorce. She needs something more stable. What did you guys think of this one?
Subscribe for more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like. It really helps the channel.